So hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rebecca and on this channel I go for all things accounting, finance, Excel and investment related. So if you do like this kind of content then please do consider subscribing. And as always, we're going to jump straight into today's video. So I've currently got a new setup. So I've got cameras here, cameras here and obviously the webcam on here. So you should be able to see different focal points as we go through this video. Now what we're going to go through is a trial balance but not a full trial balance, instead we're going to look at certain snippets of a trial balance. So what I mean by that is we're going to produce a T account for a sales ledger, sales ledger control account, a purchase ledger, purchase ledger control account and then a VAT control account and we're going to see how those end up on the trial balance in the balance sheet section or, or statement of financial position. So. What we've got on the screen here is first of all this sales ledger control account. So that's just the equivalent of the debtors ledger control account, it's just another word for it. Um, and over here we've got the sales ledger. So the sales ledger is the one that's actually in the income statement. So we've had sales in cash in the year of 1500. So when you post a sale, that's going to go to um, credit sales ledger on the income statement or um, profit or loss statement. Now, the other side of that will be if it's been paid for in cash, then you're going to have a debit to cash. But if there was VAT due on that those cash sales, then you're going to have an entry that's gone into the VAT control account. So when we look down here, you'll see that we do in fact have an entry in the VAT control account. And that is on the credit side. Because if you think of the postings here, you need to credit the sales ledger account credit VAT and then we're going to debit the bank for the full amount that's due on um, that sale item or those sales items. Now in the actual debtors ledger control account here we have a balance brought forward of £1,200 so what that tells us is that there are customers that owe the company £1,200 and it could be from last year, it could just be from the month before depending on how often these records are updated. Now then. If we want to record on here a sale that's gone through um, the debtors ledger control account, so where you've got a sale that's on credit to a customer, so you've given them 30 days to pay for example, what we're going to do is do the debit first. So when you post a journal, it's good practice to post the debit before the credits. So we're going to put sales on credit here. Now in terms of net, VAT and gross, you're going to post the gross value. So the net plus VAT equals gross and that gross value is what we're going to post into the debtors ledger control account because it's the total that's due from that customer. So let's just imagine that this is £2,000. Now we can easily work out the net very quickly from there and if we just put sales and credit here because this is going to be a credit item so a negative figure in the sales ledger or um, in the income statement we're going to have two thousand pounds divided by 1.2 and the only reason why we're dividing by 1.2 is because the total VAT on that credit sale is at 20% so we can also work out the sale on credit and that is going to be the 1666.67 times by 0.2 and if you were to add up those two together like you can see on screen there you'll see that they add back to the £2,000 gross. Now imagine if they were the only items that have gone through the sales ledger control account in the year and the sales ledger. What we need to do is close off the sales ledger control account or in other words just balance it. So if we were to do that now. You'll see that we have a balance carried forward and that's all that CFWD means of £3,200. So when we go ahead and look at the trial balance down here, you'll see that there's nothing that's been entered into the debtors control account line item. But all that's going to be is this closing balance of 3200 there. So at that point in time, the total amount that's due from customers is £3,200. So if we haven't received any contribution from those customers, so any payments that have gone through our bank there um, in that period. Now then, imagine also that we have a purchase ledger control account on top of this. So I'm just going to copy 
So the Purchase Ledger Control account is where we record any credit purchases. So where we've bought something off a supplier but we've not yet paid for it, there might be credit terms. So they might say to us, even though you've got the goods today, we only want payment in 30 days. So that would be on credit. Now, the Purchase Ledger is where we record all purchases in the income statement or profit or loss. And again, we've got the VAT Control account. So let's imagine here that the balance brought forward in the trade Creditors control account is six five thousand pounds there. Now that just means that we owe five thousand pounds to suppliers outside of the company. Now if we've got purchases in the year, then they're going to be a debit in the income statement. So let's just imagine that we've got purchases on credit totaling, let's say, two thousand. £500. So in terms of our journal we need to debit purchase ledger with the net total of those sales. Next we need to debit the VAT control account with the total VAT which is just going to be 2500 times 5.2 because again these are at 20% and that's just a shortcut to work out what the VAT is. And then we have an increase to our trade creditors, which is a credit, which is going to be 2,500 times by 1.2. And just as a check, if you add up the 2,500 and the 500, that should come back to what you've put into the trade creditors control account. So in terms of those journal entries, again, is debit the net value to the purchase ledger or income statement, debit the VAT control account, with the VAT element and then credit the total gross to the trade creditors control account and the reason why it's a debit in the VAT control account is because any purchases that you make in a year where you are VAT registered you can claim back that VAT from HMRC so it's a bit of an you can kind of think of it as a bit of an asset because you're going to get that money back from HMRC if you are VAT registered whereas where you've made sales you're collecting that VAT on HMRC's um, behalf, so you need to pay that back to HMRC. So it's in effect a bit of a liability. So where you've got more sales than you have purchases, um, in terms of the VAT, then you're going to have a VAT liability. Whereas if you've got more purchases VAT in that period versus the sales VAT, you're going to have a debtor in your trial balance because it'll be shown as a balance owed from HMRC. To the company. So let's see what this would look like on the trial balance. So again we need to balance off this trade creditors account and again all we mean by that is just to balance it. So we have £8,000 carried forward which is going to be that there. And in terms of the VAT liability if we just total values up here we can see there that we've got more VAT on sales than we do on purchases which means that we will owe money to HMRC there you go now the total that we are going to owe is this £133.33 and again, that needs to be shown as a liability. So if we were to work out down here, the total net assets that we have, we're going to have total assets of £33,300, total liabilities of £8,133, and then total net assets of £25,166.67. So I hope going through it this way just gives you a little bit of an, a better understanding as to where these T accounts show in a trial balance and how to prepare a trial balance. If you found it useful then please do give the video a thumbs up, consider subscribing as always and I shall see you on the next video.